In this section, we're going to graph the sine and cosine functions again, but this time including shifts, that is translations left and right, as well as translations up and down. Some terminology that we need to be familiar with. The mean value is the average y value of the function. For a sinusoid, that can be found by averaging the minimum and maximum y values, or the top and the bottom y values. Amplitude, as we've said before, is the vertical height of the maximum value above the mean value, or it's half the distance between the max and min values. Period is the horizontal length of one full cycle or oscillation. And the phase shift is the directed distance that sine x or cosine x is translated horizontally. So phase shift is also known as horizontal shift. All right, let's check out example one. We're considering a sinusoidal graph below, and we're just going to identify, assuming that this is a sine function, the mean value, the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. Now the sine function starts in the middle, that is in between the um, max and min values. So our middle value here is halfway in between the top value of three and the bottom value of negative one, which is at positive one. So our mean value is one. The sine function starts at that mean value and then goes up, back down, and then back up to zero to complete one cycle. This amplitude is three since the max value is, I'm sorry, the amplitude rather is two since the max value is two units above the mean value. And the period of this function is how long it takes one full cycle to graph. So if we want to know this, um, we have to observe that our Let's zoom in on this a little bit. We have to observe that our, fu our, our function is starting halfway in between these two values, which are negative 90 and negative 120. So that means that we start here at negative 105, 15 degrees to the left of negative 90. And then the period ends at um, halfway in between 420 and 450 which would be 435. So therefore, that horizontal distance in between those two values is 435 minus negative 105, which is 435 plus 105, or 540 degrees. So our period is 540 degrees. Now our phase shift is how far to the left the sine function was shifted. Since we have a phase shift that's to the left, we're going to indicate that with a negative phase shift. All right, um, let's check out the next one. We'll assume that the same graph is a cosine function. Well, cosine starts at the max and ends at the max, so we can consider this one full cycle of the cosine function. Our mean value is still one, amplitude is still two, period is still 540. Let's actually calculate this one to show that it's the exact same value. Looks like our cycle is starting here at a maximum value when theta is 30 degrees, and at a minimum, at a ma another maximum value when we're at uh, 570 degrees. So it looks like our period is 570 minus 30, which is 540. So our period is still 540, whether we me measure it from zero to zero, or from max to min, max to max, or min to min. Now our phase shift is what's gonna change though, because this graph is shifted 30 to the right so its starting point is 30 to the right of zero. We'll have a positive phase shift on this one. All right, we're gonna use a table of values to graph this sinusoidal function in the given grid and graph five points for each cycle, find the mean value, amplitude, period, and phase shift. So in order to use a table of values, we're gonna start with our x value 
and by order of operations we have to subtract 60 from it before we can take the sine of that value and then finally we're going to add 2 to get our final y value. All right, so now let's fill out our table. We know that the parent function points for sine um, are quadrantal angles that are inputs to the sine function. So those are 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And the reason why I'm putting those in the x minus 60 um, position is because the next thing that we do in the table to the right is take the sine of those values. Sine of 0 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 180 is 0, 270, the sine of that is negative 1, and the sine of 360 is 0. Now we're going to work backward from the table values. If I have x minus 60 equals 0, then x must equal positive 60. Think about that. If x is 60, x minus 60 must be 0. So we're just adding 60 to get all of those x values. And then for our final table entry, sine of x minus 60 plus 2, we just have to add 2 to get those values. And we're going to graph our function by looking at the very first column. Those are our x values. And the last column, those are our y values. So we have 60, 2, 150, 3, and then 240, 2. 330, 1, and finally 420, 2. And we can see that same sine function shape. So let's um, observe some things about this. Our mean value is the average y value. So the top y value is 3, the bottom is 1, mean value is 2. The period is how long it takes this function to graph. So from 60 degrees up to 420 degrees, the period is 420 minus 60, or 360 degrees. So period is 360. The amplitude of this function is 1 because the distance of the function above the mean value is just 1. And our phase shift is 60 because this cycle starts 60 units to the right or 60 degrees to the right of zero. All right now let's actually finish the rest of the graph. So if we finish the rest of the graph by putting in more cycles it looks like every 90 degrees the graph goes from a zero to a max, not another 90 degrees to a min, I'm sorry to a zero, and then another 90 degrees to a min, and then we don't have another 90 degrees for it to go all the way back up again, but we can continue the same pattern. To the left and to the right. So I hope you uh, realize some things. We can see that phase shift in the equation. We can also see that vertical shift is two or the mean value is two in the equation. All right, let's try the next one, and we're going to do the same thing for this one. Um, we're going to create a table of values, so we're going to start with our x values. Parentheses have to happen first, so we have to add 30, and then we have to multiply that result times 1 half, and then finally we have to take the cosine of those values. And the brackets just really function as outer parentheses. All right, guess where we're going to put our quadrantal values? In the place where we have angles that need their cosine taken. So that would be in that third column over, since the next column will take the cosine of those values. 
So 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. And then the cosine of those values are 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, since cosine starts at its max and goes down. All right, so if we have 1 half of something and we want to know what the whole thing is, we're going to double it. So double 0 is 0. Double 90 is 180. Double 180 is 360. Double 270 is 540. And double 360 is 720. And then if we have x plus 30, when we want to know what x is, we have to subtract 30. So negative 30, 150, um, and then 330, 510, and 690. Just as before, our first column is our x values, last column y values. So let's graph this one, see what it looks like. We have negative 30, comma, 1, 150, comma, 0, 330, comma, negative 1, and 690, I'm sorry, 510, rather, 510, comma, 0, and then last, lastly, 690, comma, 1. So this one is spread out. Our mean value is 0 because that's the average of the high and the low values. The period of this one, if we start at negative 30 and end at 690, the period is 690 minus negative 30, or 720 degrees. So that's the length of one full cycle. So our period is 720. The amplitude, or the distance of the graph above the mean value, when it reaches its max value, is 1. So our amplitude is 1, and the phase shift is negative 30 since our cycle started 30 units to the left of 0. We can kind of fill out the rest of this. And that's our entire graph. Now, it'll be easier if we don't use a table of values, so let's uh, get some general things from the equation of a sinusoidal function. If we have a sinusoidal function, its amplitude is the absolute value of a, where a is the multiplier of the outside of the sine or the cosine. Its period is 360 divided by b, where b is the multiplier of the uh, x value on the inside. Its mean value is d, where d is the vertical shift of the function, and its phase shift is c, where c is the number subtracted from x when b is factored out from that expression. So notice that the inside here, the inside of each of these functions, is in factored form. All right, so let's check out the next example. We're going to work some examples of this type of determining from the equation what each of these values is. The mean value in example 2a is the vertical shift, which is the number that's added to the outside of the function. The amplitude is the number that multiplies the sine or cosine function, except for we disregard its negative sign because amplitude will always be a positive value. That Remember, that negative just means that that graph is inverted. The period is 360 divided by b, which is the number that multiplies x, and so that period is going to be 120 degrees, and our phase shift is the number that's subtracted from x, so that'll be 45 degrees. Similarly, in b, we have a mean value of 0 because there is no value that is added to the end of this function, so that's plus 0. Amplitude is 5, since that's the multiplier of the outside of the cosine function. The period is 360 divided by 4 thirds, which is 360 times 3 quarters. 
uh, 1 quarter of 360 is 90, so 3 quarters are 270 degrees. And our phase shift is negative 60. Remember that invert input operations appear in inverse form. Whenever we have x plus 60 inside of the parentheses, we're really subtracting 60 to get our x values. All right, let's check out the next. Mean value is 3, since that's the number that's added to the cosine. The amplitude is 1, since 1 is the number that multiplies the cosine function. The period is 360 divided by a half, which is 360 times 2, or 720. And our phase shift is 0 degrees, since there is no number uh, subtracted or added to x. The next one, we have to keep something special in mind, and that is that the inside of the sine function needs to be in factored form. So if we factor out this 3, we have 3 times x minus 120. Keep that in mind. Our mean value is 4, since 4 is what's added to the sine function. Amplitude is 7, since negative 7 is multiplying the sine function, but we're going to take its absolute value because amplitude is never negative. Period is 360 divided by 3, which would be 120. And the phase shift is 120. This is the one that you need to be careful about. Phase shift, we'll have to factor in order to make sure that we've got the correct phase shift. All right, let's utilize those to graph our new function. Um, we're going to forego making a table of values. I think it's going to be easier for us to just graph our our sine or cosine function using amplitude and vertical shift. All right, we've got a new origin at the point C comma D. So that's just our translation, right? Translation, that's what we're looking at for adding and subtracting. So our new origin for this function is negative 30 degrees comma 1. So I'm just going to mark off our new origin, negative 30 degrees comma 1. We're graphing a sine function, and sine function starts actually at 0. So we're going to graph on top of this point. And then sine function from there goes up to a maximum. Well, in order for it to go up to a maximum, we have to determine how far over we're going to go. And that's going to be determined by our stretch. So the period of this function is 360 divided by 2, which is 180. Normally, we go over one quad quadrantal distance, or 90 degrees. So when our period is compressed by a factor of 2, we'll go over from this point 45 degrees and go up by the amplitude. So there our amplitude is 3. So from that 0 point, we're going to go up by 3 and over 45 degrees. So since each um, increment on the horizontal scale is 30 degrees, 45 is one and a half of those. And then another one and a half, we go back down to, zero, to the 0 point, which is actually at positive 1. And then from there, we go down to our minimum point, which is three units below, and we'll go over another 45 degrees. And then finally, back to the zero point and over another 45 degrees. So this should all take place in 180 degrees. Um, and I think I've gone over it just a little bit too far. We'll have to inspect our graph very carefully to make sure that we've graphed all of our points accurately. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. So it looks like each time I'm going over to the right, I'm going by one and a half of those um, increments there. So that's where we're ending. So there's what our sine function looks like. Notice that the, the mean value is one up from the x-axis, and the, the graph starts 30 units to the left of the x-axis. And that takes us from negative 30 on the left to 150 on the right, and that is 180 degrees. That agrees with our period. 
So now we just need to fill in the rest of the graph. Once we've got a little bit graphed, it gets easier to graph the rest. Be careful that you go all the way up to the midline or the, the mean value line when you're graphing your zeros. They're not on the x-axis for this. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the left to graph additional cycles. Of course, I just made the mistake that I warned you about making. I've got to count carefully. Each time we go from one point to the other, we're going to be going a vertical distance of three, which is the amplitude. As I do this, I'm illustrating how difficult it can be to maintain that concentration so that we've got all of our middle points sort of lining up here in the middle at, at y equals 1. All right, let's try the next. y equals 2 minus 3 times the cosine of a quarter x. For this one, you may want to rewrite your function so that it's y equals negative 3 cosine of 1 quarter x plus 2. That may make it easier to think about term, think, think in terms of vertical shift and also amplitude. So our mean value is 2. And if you want, you can just graph a sort of a very faint dotted line horizontally across at y equals 2 at that mean value. And then our amplitude, the other vertical measure, is 3. But I'm going to put in parentheses here that this cosine function is going to be inverted. So our amplitude is 3. If you want to put another horizontal dotted line 3 units above that one, and one 3 units below, that can kind of help encapsulate where this sine function or cosine function should be graphed. Then we're going to graph our new origin. That'll take into account our shifts. New origin. And that origin is going to be at 0 degrees, since there's nothing subtracted or added to x, comma 2. So 0 degrees, comma 2. Something that I need to make sure that I drive home is the point that cosine doesn't actually go through the new origin. Cosine will start at its maximum value in general. This function has an inverted graph due to the negative coefficient of cosine, so that means we're going to start at our minimum value. Now let's figure out what our period is so we know how fast this thing needs to oscillate. So the period of this function is 360 divided by 1 quarter, which is 360 times 4, which is 1440. Well, we're probably not going to be able to graph one full cycle. But what we can say is that the period is expanded by a factor of 4. So normally, we will go over our quadrantal angle and up by the amplitude from here. Our quadrantal angle in an unstretched function is 90, and so 90 times 4 is 360. So we're going to go over 360 and up to the middle, over another 360 and up to the maximum. So there's at least part of that cosine cycle. And then we can go in the opposite direction to negative 360 to graph some more. and there is our stretched uh, cosine function, as much of it as we can fit on the graph. All right, let's try this last one here. Um, 
y equals negative 3 plus 2 times the sine of x. If you want to scratch out that plus negative 3 and just stick a minus 3 on the end, go for it. So we have a vertical shift of negative 3. So I'm going to go down 3 here and draw a little dotted line at the middle y value. And then our amplitude is 2, so that means we're going to go two units above it at our maximum and two units below that point at our minimum value. The other thing we'll need to be careful about here is that we factor this inside. So we have 2 times the sine of 3 times x minus 60 minus 3. So that means our phase shift is positive 60. So we're going to start 60 units to the right and the period is 360 divided by 3 or 120. So this one is compressed by a factor of 3. So we're going to start 60 units over and if you want to graph your new origin it'll be at the phase shift comma vertical shift. So 60 comma negative 3. So that's where our new origin is. And be careful, the graph doesn't necessarily go through that. The sine function actually does. So I guess I'll leave that point there. And then this sine function is going to go up next because it is a right side up sine function. It's not inverted since we're not multiplying the sine function by a negative number. And from here, we squished our period by a factor of three, right? Quadrantal angles are 90, so we're gonna squish that by a factor of three, and 90 divided by three is 30, so that'll, that's how far we'll have to go to go up to our maximum value, back down to the zero value, to the minimum value, and then back to the zero value. There's one cycle. I'm not going to probably do the rest of this, but you certainly could if asked. We could certainly provide many more cycles, and this one's actually fairly easy to graph once you've graphed one full cycle. The first cycle is the one where you have to concentrate. I'm just going to put dot 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 here. All right, now this last part, we're writing the, an equation for each sinusoidal function. Now you might ask yourself, how do I know if this is a sine or a cosine? And the answer is you actually don't. Okay, so what I'm going to do most of the time, unless it's really obvious that it's a sine, I will just assume that it is a cosine function. And if I can assume that it's a cosine function that's not inverted, I'll do that. So I'm going to pick this section of the cycle right here. I'm going to say that's a non-inverted cosine function. And let's find out some things. Let's find out what our mean value is. So we, this, this uh, graph goes up to a max of 4 and down to a min of negative 2. Halfway between those two values is the number 1. So our mean value is 1. That's also our vertical shift. And it looks like our phase shift is 120 degrees. So 1 was our mean value and our phase shift was 120 degrees. Now we've taken into account the shifts. Now let's worry about amplitude. Our amplitude is 3 because the max value is 3 units above the mean value. And what else have we got to do? We've got to worry about the, uh, the period, right? So one cycle graphs from 120 to 300 degrees. So 120 to 300 degrees. So that means that the period is 300 minus 120 
which would be 180 degrees. So remember that 360 over B is equal to the period, which is 180. So 360 equals 180 times B, and then we'll divide both sides by 180. That gives us a B value of 2, which means this has been horizontally compressed. I think we have all of our information now. Y equals A, which is our amplitude, 3, times the cosine of, and then we have our multiplier B, which is 2, times in factored form X minus the phase shift plus the vertical shift outside of the cosine. So there's one possible answer for this particular question. It is also permissible to have an answer of y equals negative 3 times the cosine of 2 times x minus 30 plus 1. That assumes that our cosine function is starting at 30 degrees. I'm going to highlight this for you and then concludes the one period at 210 degrees. Um, if we do that, we assume that our phase shift is 30, and we assume that our, si our cosine function is inverted, so we'll use a negative multiplier for the cosine. All right, let's check out another. So for this one, we're going to have to find our mean value again. Mean value is halfway in between the max and the min. So the mean value, which is our D value, is 2. The amplitude is 2. If we assume that this is a cosine function, and I like to do that because I think it's easier to think about where the maxes are and we can go just max to max and if we assume that it's a cosine function then our phase shift is 30 degrees and our period ends at 270 degrees so that means that phase shift is 30 degrees and the period is 270 minus 30 or 240. We can use the period to calculate B. Repeat after me. The period is not the same as the value of B. Good. All right, so the period is 240. So we remember that the period can be calculated by using 360 over B. We can set that equal to 240, the period, and then solve for the value of B. And then that gives us 360 over 240 is B, or 3 halves. So if we write our equation of this one, this will be Y equals the amplitude 2 times cosine of parentheses or brackets here, um, our B value, which is 3 halves, times open parentheses, X minus the phase shift, and then plus the vertical shift of 2. And there's an equation for that graph. All right, that is it for this lesson.